I'm 45, my mom, she just dies. She's just dead. So, desperately wallowing in the swamp of grief, I decide to do what any red-blooded American would. I decide I'm going to go shopping. So the jolt of my mom's death has forced me to sort of see the world through her eyes in some way. It's not something I thought, oh, I'll see the world through my mom's eyes now. She's dead, and all of a sudden, I do. And I, and I realize I, I, I need to change. I need to become a different person. I need to, to become kinder and, and gentler and more organized. Because I, I know my mom, she would have liked that. So, I decide the first stop on my shop till you drop extravaganza will be Ikea. Yeah. <sighs> I'm just gonna buy a whole slew of brand new Scandahoovian organizing stuff. I'm gonna get a desk and I'm gonna get like filing cabinets and I'm, I'm gonna get shelving. I'm gonna get shelving. I'm excited. So Ikea, in case you've been, I don't know, living under a rock for a decade, is this one of these nouveau sort of Norse uh, superstores packed to the gills with everything you'll need and many things, frankly, you'll never need to organize your life and your office and just sort of get your shit together. Uh, and it's all made with this uh, Nordic unfuss and anti-ostentation. It's cheap as dirt. You assemble it at home, and they have their stuff has funny names like the Homlarp and the uh, the Gluck, and my favorite, the Huskevlerpel. I don't even know what that is, but I just like to say it, Huskevlerpel. So I walk into the Gigantor warehouse and it is a buzzing hive crammed with consumer bees. There's groovy grannies and teen queens and we're just together couples and there's we fucking hate each other couples and there's neo hippies and post yuppies, a fantastic cross section of American culture all there to buy their Scandinavian shit. And then, of course, there's me. I, I, frankly, I'm looking forward to uh, forgetting my grief, to consuming the opiate of buying. I want to escape to the mundane. But all the sleek desks and the, the slick clocks, I, I, I just find them exhausting. Slowly, the Nordic walls start creeping in on me. My heart starts racing. My, my Gland starts secreting. I'm sweating and I'm hot and I'm cold and my head feels like it's being squeezed by a giant with anger management issues. Uh, I finally drag myself to the, the counter where everybody's lined up with their carts full of shit that they want now, that they're trying to pay for, and they're all cranky because they've been there for way too long, and I just can't even stand up anymore. I collapse right next to the paying area and flop down in this bony little flarkle. I haven't thought about my mom at all since we got to Ikea until now. And I... <laughs> I see her sitting there. on her deathbed, you know, just sort of gasping. I can 
practically see the glioblastoma on fire inside. <laughs> inside of her head. <sighs> and then I see this giant 50 foot water wall just about to crash down all over me and I try to stop it. I try to stop the tears. I try to stop the, the ache and the pain and the, and the misery. And I, I just can't. I, I'm just like whimpering like a, like a sad little animal. And then I'm just wailing, weeping. Right, my eyes out. I don't know how long this goes on, but oh. everybody's very nice about it. None of the consumers seem to even recognize that I'm sitting there crying my eyes out. None of the very attractive employees come over and say, excuse me, sir, would you please stop having a nervous breakdown on our flarkel? So, uh, that's good anyway. Uh, every time I think I'm done, I just start again. Until finally, The hurricane passes, and I'm wiping the tears off my cheeks. And I'm just like, I'm like a shipwreck. And the thrill of the bye, and the escape to the mundane, just seem ridiculous, pointless, useless. Because even at Ikea, grief never sleeps. <laughs>